Hey everyone, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. If you want to see me trying out a full face of new to me makeup, some of these products have been out a while, some of them are new-ish, but they're all new to me today. So I apply my makeup, talk you through my experience and share my thoughts. So if that's something you'd like to see, then keep on watching. Let's prime. So I'm finally gonna try out this very, famous, very loved Too Faced Hangover Primer. So it's a replenishing face primer. Um, I guess my skin is kind of hungover after the excesses of Christmas. I've got a few breakouts around my chin. Packaging looks like this. The fact that it's silicone free makes me wonder if I'm gonna like this because I love silicones in my primers to fill in the pores and fill in my fine lines. I, I love them. My favourite primer of all time is the Smashbox Photo Finish Primer. Um, so very different to this, but sometimes you've just got to try something new. We love your skin even when you don't. When long days of work and late nights of play give you a beauty hangover, this is your instant cure. Hangover is a revolutionary makeup primer infused with coconut water, prebiotic based ingredient and skin revivers that work together to boost skin's radiance, promote elasticity and help hydrate while locking down makeup for fresher, longer, more flawless wear. Now, I have already moisturized, my skin's already quite hydrated so hopefully piling this on top is not gonna be too much. We'll find out. I probably put my moisturiser on about 15 minutes ago, so hopefully this won't pill. So a consumer study showed that after using this primer, 100% said makeup went on smoother, or 100% said skin looks more radiant, 100% said skin looked more hydrated, and 100% said their skin had the appearance of a full night's rest, right? These are some bold claims Too Faced, so I, I'm going to give it a try. Um, I can't see any instructions, so I'm just gonna give it a few pumps. Is two and a half pumps too much? It doesn't have much of a smell, maybe just kind of a fresh smell, so I will dot this on. It's got, um, ooh, I like it. <laughs> It's got the texture of like a lightweight gel moisturizer. It's not as thick as I was expecting it to be. I'm obviously used to my silicone primers and it is bringing, I think, just a bit of an instant radiance. I'm getting like the wide awake look. It makes my skin look fresh and dewy. And obviously, it's not having that line filling effect, so I don't know if it's going to become my number one primer. We'll see what happens when I put the rest of the makeup on top. But yeah, easy to use, sinks in nicely. I get what they said about your skin looking fresh and awake. So far, I'm impressed. This is £28 for 40 mils, so quite a decent um amount of primer in there i think the standard size is often usually around 30 mils so not bad on price i might choose to use this on no makeup makeup days just to give skin that healthy glow i'm really really impressed more impressed than i thought i was going to be i can see why it's a cult product um i also do this in a travel size 20 mils for 12 pounds which is actually better value than buying the full size. So I would recommend you buy the travel size version because you can see if you like it and it's actually better value because that would work out as 24 pounds for the 40 mils. So don't buy a big size of this like me. That was very silly. I am gonna finally try out the <gasps> Pat McGrath Skin Fetish Foundation. Now I've heard a lot of good things about this and I tried to do a colour match via the website, so I'm hoping this is gonna work. It looks like a pretty decent match. So I got this in the shade Six Light. I'm so excited to try this. It feels heavy. The bottle is luxe. People seem to like the packaging of this because it looks like a cigarette box. Oddly enough, whenever my boyfriend cops 
a look at my Pat McGrath makeup. He always really likes it. He likes a gold, like a little magpie. So it is really, really beautiful. You get 35 mils in here. So again, a little bit more than standard. Five mils more. I'll stop looking at this glowing base in the viewfinder. How vain. It's really, really nice. Um, so yep, yeah, I got this off the Pat McGrath website when there was a special offer. I think I got this for around £40. It usually costs £60. It's available from Selfridges in the UK and they sometimes do the 20% offer so you can sometimes get this less than the hefty £60 price tag. The reason I wanted to try this is because I fell in love with the La Mer fluid foundation which is getting up for £100 in price and as much as I wanted to buy another bottle I just thought that's an insane amount to pay for a foundation. This is an insane amount to pay for a foundation but with the money I got off on the offer it was 40 something pounds rather than £60 so far. If this compares in any way to the La Mer then it's almost a bargain. This is how my brain works. So without further ado I'm so excited to try this it's a pump bottle I hope this shade matches it's a lot more liquidy than I was expecting it to be quite runny this might be a bit too oh I was wondering if it might be too yellow toned for me but I think this is going to work I don't know why I was expecting it to be thicker um I've heard that this is just a sheer lightweight your skin but better kind of coverage and I know that Pat always uses her fingers rather than sponges to apply makeup so that's what I'm going to try and do in honour of Pat's today I think I might have put even a bit too much on I think I did a couple of pumps a little bit of this goes a really long way I think I am going to have to use a sponge to press the rest of this in that is a decent shade match though. I'm just gonna put some on my neck to avoid the dreaded demarcation line. Whew. It does look like a very subtle foundation. I'm gonna um, bounce the rest of this in with a damp beauty sponge. It is very sheer coverage. I like the way my skin is looking. I think this is just an Eco Tools sponge. I believe you can layer this up for more decent coverage, which I'll try. I've got that um, breakout on my chin that I talked about earlier still peeking through. I'm looking very white in the monitor, but on my skin this actually looks really nice and healthy it's not kind of melting into the skin as easily as I thought it would I'm having to work it in a bit that might be to do with a primer obviously I've never tried that primer before I do have Pat's primer actually so next time I'll try it with that because I'm guessing that will give the ultimate finish very sheer but my skin does look healthy I am going to put more on because I think I need more so I wouldn't recommend this if you have problem skin I would recommend this for you lucky people that are kind of almost so flawless to begin with that you don't need foundation I can already tell it's a different type of product to the La Mer foundation which you can get quite decent coverage out of I feel like this is more of a skin enhancer but it is an absolutely beautiful one and I'll go back to my sponge to bounce the rest of that in I think this would be gorgeous in the summer it's very very sheer I just feel like I want more coverage pattern. I could build this up more but I think it will probably never get 
exactly where I wanted it. The pimples on my skin are still saying hi. And I guess that's going to have to be okay for today. I'm going to read the claims about this foundation for you on the site now. This does have a 4.8 star rating on the Pat McGrath website and on the website they do a cool feature where you can kind of match your face to the closest model to help you pick your shade and that works out really well for me today I will say. So Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Foundation, £61 now it is. Mother's instantly iconic foundation builds weightlessly from a sheer veil to a flawless medium coverage in 36 universal colour choices and 5 shade levels. The second step in Mother's Sublime Perfection System delivers a customisable couture finish that brings runway skin in real life in a few powerful drops. Silky and luxurious, it feels creamy to the touch, delivers controlled, easily buildable coverage, self-setting, post-perfecting and long wearing. It's sublime satin finish lasts all day and the nourishing formulation is crafted with Vita Serum Complex which is designed to help fight formation of wrinkles by preserving the hydrolipidic film barrier of the skin. I did not know this had skincare benefits as well which kind of almost justifies the price a little bit. Um, this complex boosts hydration by activating the natural production of hyaluronic acid and ceramides, diamond core powder technology instantly improves the skin texture by optically smoothing and blurring the appearance of fine lines and imperfections, an illuminating soft pigment blended into the formula converts and scatters light emulating the effect of a healthy youthful complexion, formulated without parabens, talc or fragrance and it's oil free. Now after reading that it kind of makes me want to buy it again. Um, it does have a soft focus finish. I can still see my lines, but it's not going to work. Miracles. And we are instructed to actually use a Sublime Finish Perfection Foundation brush, which I don't have. Maybe I should have applied with a brush. Seamlessly diffuse the foundation by using sweeping motions as you blend out. Apply product in thin layers and buff to gradually build blur and create luminous medium coverage. This is making me think that I do want to build it more and I will grab just a brush that I have. This is the Spectrum B01 and I'm going to go in and buff a bit in with a brush. See how we're getting with that in the more problem areas. Wow. Oh, maybe I did you dirty part because it's going on beautifully. Maybe I should have read the website before I put that on. I do usually prefer to apply foundation with my fingers and then finish off with a beauty sponge. But this is going on really nicely with the brush. And again, like it said, it's a medium coverage, so I'm not going to carry on piling that up on my chin because it's never going to give me the full coverage that I want but the finish is beautiful I'm not sure if it's translating on camera but it really does have that radiant luminosity as described dewy, youthful, healthy young looking I am going to finish off with the sponge like I always do and if I didn't have those blemishes, I would be describing my skin as airbrushed right now. Okay, now I'm realising I had another product to try out, which I should have probably used before the foundation. But I am going to go ahead and use it now. It is the Beauty Pie super luminous under eye genius corrector now i'm hoping this is going to be a bit of a dupe for the becca under eye color corrector which costs about 20 pounds because if you're a member of beauty pie this costs about seven pounds i've been wanting to try this for ages so even though i've already put my foundation on i would usually use color corrector under the foundation i'm going to try it today for you um but just have that caveat so it looks like this, looks very much like the Becca one. 
feels creamy. That's what it looks like. Giving me Becca vibes. And I'm just gonna dot that. Wow. Wow, that has really instantly brightened up the under eye area. I'm not sure if you can see the difference between my two eyes, but I can see a subtle but there difference in my mirror. I'm just going to look on the Beauty Pie website to see if I've done a complete disaster by using it after foundation. For those of you that don't know, Beauty Pie is a beauty buyers club. You pay a monthly or annual membership fee to get access to cost price luxury beauty products. So if you're not a member, you can still buy this from Beauty Pie for £20, but if you are a member, then it's £7.34. Comes in two shades, light medium, which is the one I used, or medium deep. And this is suitable for all skin tones, for brightening, moisturising dark, problem under eye circles before applying a skin tone matching concealer. So at least I put it on before concealer. An anti-fatigue dark circle lifting underwear. Bright and dark circles with high luminous intensity anti-fatigue pigment. Moisturises and refreshes with linoleic acid and vitamin E for under eye skin barrier repair so I would have definitely been better putting that underneath my foundation so I could get those gorgeous skincare benefits too. I will be trying to remember to do that in future. Instantly skin smoothing and line minimising. Don't know if, I've, if it's done much for my lines to be honest. Reduces the appearance of dark circles and improves skin's barrier with the MDI complex. Not sure what the MDI complex is, but that sounds like it's going to have some kind of long-term skin benefit. Tap along the under eyes to reduce puffiness. So over your eye cream, add a little bit of super luminous under eye genius onto your ring finger. Pat from the inner eye outwards to seal in moisture, hydrate and brighten the look of dark circles. Apply concealer on top. Reapply if you need to throughout the day. Okay, so you can reapply if you need to throughout the day. So this product can be used over makeup, feeling a little bit better. Um, warm up the product between your fingertips. I'll do that for my other eye. Um, and pat gently under the eye, starting at the inner corner, blending outwards. Reapply an additional thin layer over concealer for even more intense luminosity. So you can actually use this on top of concealer too. So that's really good to hear. It's a very versatile product. I will put some on the other eye now. And I'll warm it up between my fingers this time round. Mm -hmm. Tap it on. It's beautiful. If this doesn't crease and lasts I would actually say I almost prefer this to the Becca one already because the Becca one has a tendency to bunch up a little more than this. I think if you're not very careful with the Becca one it can glue pop. Um, this one I can already tell by the formula I'm not going to have that issue. I'm going to put a little bit more on under both eyes just to see how much brightness I can get. Again, I think this will be perfect on its own for no makeup makeup days. I am super impressed. It hasn't taken away my dark circles altogether because my dark circles are not circles but they are shadowing caused my, by my bone structure. So just Bring in as much brightness to the area as I can get is helpful to me and I'm super impressed by that product. Next I'm going to try out the Pat McGrath again Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer and you get 5 mils of this. This is £26 and I got it in the same shade as my foundation. I got this in shade number 6, light. So I'll be needing some concealer from that 
medium coverage foundation so I'm just going to dot that's a good skin match as well and I'll oh I made a bit of a boo-boo by putting that under my eyes because I usually like to use a lighter shade under my eyes to bring brightness but I'll make it work I'll just blend that in with a sponge I can always put some of that lovely beauty pie brightener over the top if I need to and doing a decent job minimizing my imperfections I usually use the Tarte Shape Tape so I'm used to mega coverage and um, this is not giving me as much coverage as the Shape Tape but maybe it was never supposed to I'll have a bit of a read on the website see what this is going to do for me Mother's first ever concealer makes every flawless face fantasy come true, delivering creamy, full coverage in a natural radiant matte finish in the same 36 universal colour choices that seamlessly complement her foundation. Um, so it's long wearing, weightless, endlessly accommodating to the face's most exquisite contours and extreme expressions. It provides seriously smooth coverage that becomes warm with the skin. Mimicking its natural stretch, no elasticity, sans creasing or caking, no filter required, delivers a multitude of transformative effects, perfect for your complexion, brighten and blur under the eye, illuminate the high points of your face, contour the cheekbones, nose and jawline, corrects discoloration, conceals blemishes with this versatile formulation Mother has you covered. Like the foundation it's got all those same skincare benefits in and its flex form technology ensures uniform true colour, blending smoothly into the skin, optically blurring pigments provide sublime soft focus effects Instantly improving the skin's texture, velvety, luxurious, lightweight, long-lasting. It's just going to do everything. It is nice. It's not as full coverage as my Tarte Shape Tape. Let's see if I can build it up a little bit. It does look very, very natural on the skin. I'll use the brush this time because that worked better with the foundation. And yeah, uh, that's doing better because it's absorbing less product than my sponge. Again, a very nice concealer. It does blend very well into the skin, but maybe not quite as much coverage as I would have wanted. Thanks, Pat, anyway. I think my complexion is looking pretty good. So, next I have the Huda Tantor, so I'm going to do my bronzer and my contour with this. I have just bought this in the lightest shade Fair, so hopefully that's going to work to me and it is a cream to powder contour and bronzer. So this is £26 um, and you get 11 grams. So this is a luxurious cream to powder bronzer, deeply pigmented, gives you a natural bronze look or build up and contour as you layer. Tantal combines the balance of shadow and warmth for a luminous matte glow that's never dull. Blending seamlessly, the long lasting formula, both water and sweat resistant. So again, they're saying use the Huda brush. I'm just gonna use my brush. Um, blend all over for a healthy finish. Um, use the brush in circular upward motions. I'm just going to go for it. And I'm going to go in using that same brush that I used for the complexion. This is what it looks like, the shade Fair. Oh, I'm just going to swirl the brush in and say a little prayer and have a little... Place. I'm gonna like I'm gonna use it. Wow, it's pigmented, everyone. I 
do not need that much. A little of this goes a very long way. I'm going to suck in my cheeks and do some contour. Wow. It's quite a thick cream, which I know is going to dry down to a powder. Um, I need to get my sponge involved, guys, because I should have tapped my brush onto this way more lightly. A ton of product came off onto the brush, which I then promptly put onto my face. So I'm going to try and blend like crazy with my sponge before it sets down into a powder to avoid looking like a mad umpa lumper. Now I think hopefully the sponge is saving me. So I'll just blend that down my neck. Um, so the first thing I would say about this is a little <laughs> goes a very long way. You do not need much product at all. And thankfully, I think the sponge has absorbed some of that and I'm just about getting away with it. The fair shade was a really good match for my pale skin and this is actually not looking too bad. Um, it's kind of gone everywhere. I, I didn't get that um, kind of very specific contouring that I wanted because I just put way too much product on my face. This is not too bad. So I'm just going to cut my losses there and move on. And I am going to move on to blush. I have the Fenty, the Fenty Cream Blush which I'm super excited to try. I have the shade number two, Petal Poppin, and I absolutely love cream blushes. My favorite, I think, is still the OG Stiller Convertible Color. This is like a really nice kind of pinky peach shade. Um, I love both those two shades, so I'm sure I will love a mixture. Okay, so this is called the Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Blush. It costs £19 for three grams. There's a shade finder on the Fenty website. It's this light as air, non-greasy cream blush that instantly melts into the skin for an effortless wash of colour. I'm loving this description. Giving life to all skin tones, no fuss, natural looking flush in ten shades. So they say it just makes you look super healthy, um, impossible to overdo. I can give it a try, guys. Um, so it's a buildable finish. But yep, they say you can apply with fingertips or brush, and you can even use it on the lips. So I like to use a finger for my cream blush. Oh, it does feel creamy. That way you can really melt it into the skin. So I just like to smile and tap it on. It reminds me of the Stiller one because it has that kind of creamy finish. It is not um, blending in as easily as my Stiller blush. It looks pretty enough. Um, however, I already know that the blendability is not as good as the Stiller one. So this is not going to replace the top spot. Um, I'm going to put a bit more on to layer. It's a pretty shade. I really like the shade. The finish is nice. It's nice and creamy. It is just a bit more hard work than I am used to with my Stila. So... Thanks Rihanna, it's good. It's just not my holy grail blush. Staying with complexion, I'm gonna go on to highlight next and I am gonna use the Cora Organics from Miranda Kerr. 
This is the Rose Quartz Luminizer. The organic highlighter with a soft pink rose quartz hue that provides hydration and a luminous glow. These products are made with rose quartz, um, a crystal believed to carry a soothing energy to encourage love and acceptance of ourselves and others. I don't know how much I buy into the crystal powers, but Miranda Care always looks gorgeous, so that's enough to make me want to try this. I saw her wearing this um, on an Instagram post and she looks like an angel. I mean, she was an angel, wasn't she? Looks like this. Again, I'll read the instructions to avoid getting into trouble. It is £25 for six grams. And I will say, because it's organic, they, these do tend to have shorter expiration dates. I've got to use this one by the summer. Um, I guess they don't have as many preservatives in. You can put this anywhere on the face where it needs glow. It's got no nasties in. Um, it's gonna brighten my skin. So apply with a light touch to your cheekbones, inner corners, bridge of the nose for a natural glow. All the places. Um, that you would usually put your highlight and the main ingredient in this is castor seed oil so hopefully it's not going to make me look too greasy now that is subtler than I thought it was going to be after watching Miranda's Instagram but I can see it's giving a lovely subtle sheen I'm glad it's not completely blinding because I like to be able to start subtle and then build up to the look I want. So I'm just tapping that on to my cheekbones and I'm very impressed. It's there, it's making me look healthy, glowy, angelic. She's kind of just naturally beautiful. I'm gonna put a bit of the temple and the brow bone doesn't feel too sticky even though its main ingredient is castor seed oil and it just makes me look dewy glowy dare i say angelic i'm impressed well done miranda i have the becca under eye brightening setting powder now, as you'll be aware, I'm always looking to brighten my under eyes, so I'm super excited to try this one. Um, this is a Revolution Pro Brush 210. I've just dipped that in the powder, then I'll tap off the excess, and I'll make a... Oh, I'll tap out that... Um, all that stuff I had going on under my eyes had creased slightly, but not much at all, to be honest. And... Oh, that's almost invisible. I'm gonna go for some more. It's a really finely milled, um, translucent powder, but not really showing up at all on the skin. But now I'm layering, I can see it could get a bit white casty looking, as most of these under eye powders could, if you layer them up too much. And I'm gonna stop right there, because it's starting to get crazy. I wouldn't say I'm blown away by the brightening power, although I had um, already brightened with that Beauty Pride product, so maybe it wasn't a fair test. I'll see what the claims are for this. You get 2.7 grams in here. Uh, it's only got three and a half stars, and it's 20 pounds. So, claims to be a brightening under eye setting powder, featherweight powder, infused with light scattering particles. I wouldn't say it's as good as the Laura Mercier um, secret brightening powder. To keep your concealer in place and as a natural shine. I don't really see shine, but maybe I put too much on. For days when you haven't got enough sleep, helps make eyes well rested. Um, stops concealer caking extends wear time, blurs the look of fine lines, maybe a little bit, light reflecting pearl powders. My first impressions that I don't love it and the first review I came to said good but not the best 
first impressions I would probably agree with that. I put on a little bit too much and I've probably undone some of the good work of that lovely natural beauty pie under eye brightener. Wouldn't be, oh I've just put more on. I was trying to remove some of the excess. I felt like I had to put a lot on to get the effect that I wanted. Just put a bit of my smile lines there. Um, but then I put too much on. So I'm not raving about this one immediately. What's next? I'm going to do eyes next. So for eyes today, I'm going to give the... Um, Beauty Pie Cream Shadow a try. This is in Teddy Bear. I have tried these stick shadows before, but I've never tried the matte formula, which this is. Um, so it's first impression to me. I've never actually tried a matte cream shadow. So again, I'm gonna look up how to use it. I absolutely love the convenience of cream eyeshadows. I don't, I've never never used a matte cream eyeshadow before. I usually use the By Terry um, Ombre Black Stars in the shimmery formulas. So this could be interesting. This is also a shadow and a liner. So I'll try it out as both today. So these are the Wonder Colour Long Wear Cream Eyeshadow Stick. Available in tons of pretty colours. In a shimmering glitter formula and a matte formula. So, it claims to be smudge proof, crease proof, perfect colour, that's so good you won't believe your eyeshadow. A glide on, roll up stick, so creamy and easy to use, so blendable, bud resistant and brilliant, you might be converted forever from all your other favourite eyeshadows, which is what we're trying to do, isn't it, when we join Beauty Pie. Just seeing myself in the viewfinder, I feel like I need to blend that bronzer a bit more. We want to find more affordable versions of our favourite luxury products. The By Terry stick shadows are around £30. Could this be better? The shimmery formula didn't quite dupe it. Um, so the typical price of these, if you're not a member, you'd pay £22. If you are a member of Beauty Pie, you would pay just £5.10. So these are cruelty free. They've got amino acid derivatives in them. It's a flat powder for water resistance and a creamy blendable texture. Glide onto your eyes, smudge with fingertips or blend with a liner brush. So let's go for it. I'm a bit scared, so I'm gonna just tap in the concealer that's creased on my lids and I'm just gonna go for it. So I'm gonna kinda use this as my transition shade. It's a taupey color. I think I would have been maybe better going with a slightly deeper shade. I'm going to line under my eyes with this too. It's not actually showing up um, as that different from my skin colour, which is okay for no makeup day, but I think if I had my time again, I would probably purchase this in the shade Fauna, which is a cool toned matte brown. This is like a taupey shade, this teddy bear. Teddy Bear is also described as a tool, a cool toned brown, but so similar to my skin tone. It does look pretty though. I am going to use a brush to blend this in. So this is a Spectrum B06. See how oh it, it does blend in lovely. I'm just going to pinch this to blend it under my eyes as well. It's super, super subtle, so I'm going to put a little bit more on. I'm like wanting to press really hard. I'm going to use this as a liner as well, just for cohesion in my look. It's almost like one of those um, brightening under eye colours on me. I guess that's the only thing with Beauty Pie being an online retailer. You have to always do some amount of guesswork. But actually, although I wouldn't have chosen this colour, this would 
would be absolutely perfect for no makeup days. I'm finding it quite hard to blend under my eye, but honestly, that's because I got the wrong brush. I'm going to try it with this skinnier B12 brush. Looking like Uncle Fester over here. I'll clean that up with some concealer later. It does blend in really easily with both a brush or fingers. I think this could cling if you did have any dry patches. I think I put a bit too much on. And I guess the difference with creams and powders is if this was a powder now, I'd just keep blending until it went away. But with a cream, this is gonna set down. I think I might stick to powder formulas in future for my matte eyeshadow looks. I just wanted to try a cream because it's so convenient. There's one eye, there's my bare eye. I'm just gonna try and oops, clean up the mess I've made with some concealer to get a bit of definition back. First impressions are always fun. Okay, that's a bit better. I mean, to be fair, it's the first time I've ever used a product of this type before, a matte cream shadow. In future, I would apply less and build up slowly. But I'm a more is more person who's not very patient. And sometimes I come a cropper. I think that's as good as I'm gonna get. I'm gonna see if I can learn my lesson on the other eye and I'm gonna take it a bit easier. So I'll start by lining. Can't get over how much lighter this teddy bear shade is than I thought it was going to be. I guess the clue is in the name, right? It's teddy bear. Bear as in almost nothing. I'm just going to blend it under my lower lash line with that little brush. The line under my lower lash line is thicker than I would want it to be. So maybe the kind of pencil format stick shadows are better for me if I want to do them under the eye than these more chunky kind of bullets. So I'm learning again. I'll draw this all over my lid and I think I'm going to blend it on the lid with a finger. And then I'm just going to take the Again, the Spectrum B06 to blend out in the crease. And again, I've done a much better job, I think, this time. Oftentimes products have a learning curve and I'm already much happier, much happier with this eye than the other one. So I'm sorry if I judged you too soon beauty pie. I would advise um, starting off with a little amount of product and then building up but you guys are probably smarter than me and already know that. I'm trying to even out the other eyes now because I like the finish I've got on this side but I've cleaned up so much on this side I'm gonna have to try and make them match a little bit. So I would say these sticks with a little bit of practice I think you're going to be able to get a really really nice effect yeah next time I use that sh shadow stick the results going to be a lot better but now I'm just going to hide it with shimmer so I have here the Rowan Beauty already fingerprinted <laughs> Um, eyeshadow palette in 52 degrees. 
this is really beautiful this is a cool toned palette and i believe they're all cream shadows i'll have a little google so this is 37 pounds available from cult beauty it has a four star rating and how beautiful is it i don't know why i didn't use this at christmas um, so it's a high performing, innovative, easy to use, Rowan is blazing its own unique trail through the beauty sphere, looks with a conscience, the brand uses only the finest ingredients, this beautiful lineup subscribes to the highest clean standards, eliminating any suspects actives without forsaking efficacy, firming their belief that health and beauty needn't be mutually exclusive, ever opulent, pigment packed. So. It's a breathtaking wardrobe of foil effect shadows, their stunning illumes lends lids the most dazzling shimmer, dreamily creamy and seamlessly blended. Um, they give it a timeless look, glitter for grown-ups it says, these chic shades diffuse a wisp of shimmer that catches the light, not to mention attention for all the right reasons. Contained in a sleek pewter compact that fits in your tiniest clutch bag. It does actually come with one of those little velvet sleeves so you don't get fingerprints all over like me. I keep... I did put too much bronzer on. I digress. Um, it's a godsend for those who don't do eyeshadow. You're welcome to apply with fingers or a brush. So it contains the shades Basque, which is a rose gold. Rendezvous, which is a purple. Mellow, Gunmetal and Yep, which is a taupey grey. So I'm going to use the shade Yep because it's going to match my taupe eyeshadow. So I'm just going to rub my finger around there. Um, it didn't feel as creamy as I was expecting. That's the shade. And I'm just going to tap onto my lid to get some of that grown up glitter. Oh, that is beautiful and subtle. It feels a little bit sticky going on, but I don't really mind that. Um, I'm just wondering whether it will crease. I will update you on my thoughts on all these products in the description box um, after I've worn this makeup all day. If anything else occurs to me than what I've shared with you already, I like how fine the glitter is, it really is grown up glitter. I feel like my makeup is looking quite sophisticated today, although I do want to pile more on. So I'm going to go into that shadow for the third time. Because I am like a magpie, a beauty magpie, I am going to... So that's my eye with just the matte beauty pie shadow on, which is looking beautiful. And then there I am with that glitter on top and I'm going to pop some of that onto my other eye and then blend it all with a brush. Wow. It's really nice. I thought this was going to be really nice. I've also decided I'm going to use another shade as, a ha as my inner corner highlight rather than that very, very subtle luminizer from Cora, because I'd like a bit more pop to match these eyes. Really, really beautiful color. So this is a really nice kind of simple daytime two color eye look. I'm really, really happy with it, and I'm going to take that bigger B6 brush just to blend where those two eyeshadows join, and it does work as well with a brush as it does with my fingers. Very, very subtle glamour. This is the first product I've tried from this brand and I do really like it. I know that cream shadow is a bit of a mess. Just call it first time user error. I don't think it's a bad product. I just think it needs a little practice. So I'm going to take a Spectrum A16 and I am going to dip into 
this shade again it's quite a um, solid cream took a bit of work to get some onto the brush I'm going to pop this in my inner corner see how that works out for me mm, again I'm not sure if that was a mistake I don't know if I wanted this much glitter in my inner corner because it does have visible chunks of glitter even though they're small but I'm committed to it now so I'm going to do it on the other eye yeah if it didn't have the chunky glitter that'd be really nice it's not too bad I think I get away with it I really like this eye look again if I hadn't got that matte colour a bit patchy with my heavy handed application I think that's a gorgeous daytime soft glam eye look I'm really happy with that for a first time go and I'll swatch these shades for you so again they're really nice and creamy beautiful beautiful this is the purple shade God, I just love the tiny, tiny glitters, running out of fingers. I'm doing the pewter shade now. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then that brown, browny one that I've got all over my lids. So they are not very good swatches. Blame me, not the formula. This rose gold shade is Basque. This is a Rendezvous, which is a purple shade. This one is called Meow, which is that gorgeous gunmetal shade. And this is called Yep. I like these all. These are very, very me. They would work day to night. They're glittery and shimmery, but not too over the top really happy that I've purchased that palette I'll let you know how they wear in the description bar um, I'm just gonna go wash my hands now and I'll be right back to finish up the rest of my makeup I'm back and while I was in the bathroom washing my hands I did notice in the mirror that the base was already starting to look a little cakey um, I think that's because I put so many layers of the foundation on and the concealer so I wouldn't recommend building and building and building that Pat McGrath foundation. I'm just going to take, oh no, I had the bronzer on that brush. I'm going to take a sponge and just gently pat to try and blend that all in. So I would definitely only recommend the foundation for those of you blessed with fab skin. Also, a few of the blemishes that I covered up with the full coverage concealer have already popped through, which is a bit disappointing. So I'll pop some more on. But again, first impressions that this concealer doesn't last a million years. Sorry, Pat. But again, I've just touched up it does look good again it looks very white because I've got so much of that bronzer on so I'll just sweep oh it could have been the um that cream to powder bronzer to be fair that was my making my face look I'm making a real mess here it could be that cream to powder bronzer that I had to kind of put all over that is making my face look cakey so I can't say for sure then it was the foundation. It could just be the combination of the products that I'd used because of course <coughs> I am doing first impressions here today and I've got to stop bouncing this sponge against my vocal cords whilst I'm talking to you. So I have managed to refresh that base and I am almost done with my makeup now. I feel like I've been putting this makeup on for a hundred years, but next I'm going to try a product that I'm so excited about. 
This is one of my Christmas presents from my gorgeous boyfriend. It is the Ambient Lighting Infinity Powder, which I've been wanting to try for a while. Put off by the fact that it is £50. But if someone else is buying it for me, then I'm kind of okay with it. It's had mixed reviews, actually. So I hope this is decent. What it is, it's a mix of the Ambient Lighting Powders and the Strobe Powder. It's got four stars on Cult Beauty and it is £49 for 9.5 grams. This just actually comes in one shade which claims to be universal, which I think people have rightly expressed some dubiousness about. So Hourglass, we would welcome more shades. This looks like it's going to hopefully work on me, although some people with fair skin have said this turned out grey on them. but. I don't know how this would work as a finishing powder for the deepest complexions. So let's cater for everyone hourglass please and bring out some more shades. So this says luminosity and beyond, melding two ambient lighting powders and an ambient strobe lighting powder. The first of its kind finishing powder casts an endlessly radiant finish that flatters medium to light skin tones. Where is the powder for people with deep skin tones? Hourglass's Ambient Lighting Infinity Powder grants a seamless multi-dimensional highlight that illuminates and softens your complexion. The vegan cruelty-free pan is hand blended using an advanced mixing technique. No two look the same so you're left with that beautifully marbled glow boosting powder designed to work in harmony with any formula from the ambient lighting range this enhancing finishing powder delivers a radiant soft focus effects to rival your favorite photographic filter very disappointed that they have made this specifically for light to medium skin i thought this was a universal skin tone that kind of never really works for anyone at the extreme ends and just gets kind of the bulk of people in the middle but the fact that this has been designed specifically for light to medium skin tones is disappointing when they haven't launched um, an equivalent product for deeper skin tones, which I definitely think they should do. So they say to use this as a finishing powder as a last step in your complexion routine. Dust over the entire face using your favourite brush can be worn alone or layered with other products in the ambient lighting collection to create custom shades so without further ado I'll just take the biggest brush I've got to hand which is actually not that big um, it's a Spectrum C07 and I will dust that in the pan there's a little bit of kick up okay so I've got some colour on my brush I can see there and it's a finishing powder so going to go all over. I'm noticing it instant subtle luminosity which is quite nice but quite subtle and I'm not seeing anything dramatic but maybe I'm not supposed to. Going back in. Maybe it does match my skin tone perfectly because again, I'm not seeing anything dramatic, but I am seeing kind of in the monitor that radiant glow, which is not too crazy or glittery. It is mattifying me a little bit. This isn't knocking my socks off, so people with deeper skin tones, you're not missing out on anything life changing. I don't know why I keep wanting to build more like it's going to do something magical. It's not as glowy as I thought it was going to be, it's almost like a kind of radiant setting powder and now I'm looking maybe I have put a little bit too much on oh, that's the thing with these universal shades I'm thinking yeah it's even looking a little bit too deep for me maybe because it's a light to medium um skin tones 
designed for and I'm more of a light gal. Bit of an anti-climax to be honest. The finish is nice. You know, it's what we expect from our glass. Um, it's glowy. It's nice, it's not rocking my world. It's pretty, it's not essential. So what I'm gonna go for next is try the newish um, Urban Decay Glowy All Nighter Setting Spray. So this is long lasting makeup setting spray and it's called Ultra Glow. It's all day wear, it's lightweight, temperature control technology and I hopefully would know how to use a setting spray so I'll read the claims after I've applied it. Mm, feels nice and cooling. I'm always looking for more glow and radiance so I really wanted to give this one a try. Feels nice on the skin. Mm, my skin does look very glowy in the monitor. I think it's a combination of all those products I've used. Again, that setting spray is not as glowy as I thought it would be, but I can see in the monitor that I'm looking pretty glowy. It gives a bit of a soft focus effect. Works quite well with the powder. I'll read the claims of this one. It's 26 pounds for 118 mils. It's got a four star rating on the Urban Decay website and it's the best selling long lasting makeup setting spray that locks in makeup all day, now infused with hyaluronic acid and agave extracts providing a hydrating ultra glowy finish. Um, it's a vegan formula and leaves skin moisturised and refreshed. 85% said their skin felt refreshed in a consumer study, I would agree. 83% said it made their skin look radiant, I would agree. Okay, so yep, shake the bottle 10 inches away from the face. Just a different version of that massively successful all-nighter spray. We are almost there. It's time for some mascara, brows and lips. I have the By Terry um, Mascara Double Effect. So this one, I'll just grab the box claims to have, it's got two different sides to the brush I believe, one for length and one for volume. It's an interesting looking brush. So it's a special twist brush. Ah, I get it. Wow. So that's number one. And then if you twist it, the spikes come out more. Looks like just your standard mascara brush at first, but then you can twist it to get this crazy spider look in. So, with its two step twist brush, this mascara allows you to customise your lashes and get professional results with a simple quick application. This buildable texture creates infinite looks without ever smudging or flaking. Position one, the lengthened brush stretches and curves the lashes. Position two, the twisted brush thickens the lashes for dramatic volume. Right, I'm gonna have a go at this. So I'll start it in position one. Oh my gosh, can you see that? It actually shortens and lengthens the brush. Crazy, I'm gonna start with position one for the length, but then you know I'm gonna put it in position two for the volume as well. So, so it's looking nice. I'll do those bottom lashes that are absolutely covered in that cream eyeshadow. That is why they're looking spider leggy. Do not blame the mascara. That was me using that chunky cream shadow stick under the lash line and <laughs> getting um, eyeshadow all over the bottom lashes which I didn't do as badly this on the second eye so I've got like doll lashes on one side 
and then normal lashes on the other side. I'll try and even them out as best I can, although it's still clumping a little bit on those lashes, but I wouldn't like to blame the mascara. I can only blame myself. My heavy-handed application of the Beauty Pie Eyeshadow Stick. Although even on the top lashes, it's clumping a little bit, I think. I usually always use tubing mascaras because any other type of mascara smudges on me, but this was the only new one I had. So this is the lengthening. I've just got mascara all over my hand as well. This is just the lengthening type brush. I think that's done a really nice job. My lashes are looking good. I'm going to, of course, twist the brush. And now I'm going to go for another coat on the volumizing type of the brush. See if I can get the best of both worlds. It's very innovative. Never seen anything like this before. So this is going to give me volume, which of course I am going to get from the second coat. Very voluminous. This is almost false lash vibes and I'm going to leave those bottom lashes done so there I am with the two coats that's the one coat lengthening two coats length and then volume brush and that is just the lengthening side so lengthening nice for everyday look and then these two coats with the length and the volume type brush I look ready to go out so I'll just match up the other side and I'll also go in with another coat on those bottom lashes to try and balance them out to make them as chunky as the lashes on the other side. So this is probably more than I would do on an everyday basis just to demonstrate the full potential of the mascara. However, if you like a dramatic lash look, I'm just going to use a spoolie on the end of this Spectrum A24 brush just to try and come through a bit because there is a little bit of clumpiness. I know that some people like that. I'm not one really for the 60s spider leg lash look. And for that reason, I probably won't be rushing to repurchase this mascara again. However, if you like that dramatic look, this mascara could be for you. I'll let you know how easily it washes off um, tonight in the description box and I'll read about the claims of this mascara. Never seen anything like it before. Very impressed by the ingenuity by Terry. So this costs £25. And it comes in one shade Master Black. And you get 8.3 grams. So this is a dual action mascara. Extra length, extra volume, innovative twistable brush. Professional results, false lash effects. I would really agree. I think it gives a false lash effect. Lashes look infinitely longer and more volumised in just one stroke. Twist the brush to add volume. Simplicity and innovative technique allow you to achieve professional results. Clump resistant, I'm not sure about that by Terry. Flake resistant, that's good to hear. Smudge res resistant, I'll let you know in the description bar if I find it to be. Powerful lash care ingredients, that's nice to hear. Exceptional strength, easily buildable, highly pigmented formula. It includes jojoba oil, olive and avocado oils to nourish the lashes, that's a nice inclusion. Conditioning waxes and keratin to strengthen. The result, the creamy texture glides on effortlessly, coating even the tiniest of lashes. Highly pigmented so you can create an amplified false lash smudged resistant effect. So I might bring that one out for the special occasions when I want to get really glam, although you can just do one coat with 
um, the lengthening side of the brush, which looks a little bit more natural. I can't believe how dramatic these lashes look and I am actually enjoying it. Not what I'd usually wear for a day, but I like trying these things out. For the eyebrows, I am going to use the Anastasia Dip Brow Gel. And this is just a little travel size. Pretty cute. And it's in the shade Medium Brown. I usually use um, a brow gel rather than a pencil or anything else. Oh, I can see there's a little bit of a clump there on the brush which I'm just going to wipe off in the tube. I don't usually do much to my brows, I usually just run a bit of a tinted brow gel through them. My favourite is the Tarte Busy Girl Brows which is a bit of a lighter formula than this. This is a bit more pigmented than what I'm used to but it's done its job. I guess you could use this in conjunction with all the other marvellous Anastasia brow products. So you can buy this mini, very cute, for £9. It's got a 4.4 star rating on the ABH website. It's available in five shades. It's a highly pigmented, which I would agree with, eyebrow gel with a long-lasting waterproof formula to help achieve fuller looking, more defined brows. The eyebrow gel offers full coverage with a rich colour payoff, I would agree. Adhering to brow hairs to build natural dimension and fullness before drying down to a seamless matte finish, the small cone-shaped eyebrow brush is ideal for precise professional quality application. I did like the shape of the brush, it was very easy. Um, it claims to build fullness as well, which my brows are quite wild and bushy already, so I don't really need that. Um, but it claims to work for all brows, from thick, unruly, to sparse and fine brows. It's from ABH, so I have every confidence to believe it'll be a really good, really durable product. Again, I'd probably use this more for full glam than a day-to-day -day basis, just because I prefer a natural brow look, but Anastasia Beverly Hills are known for really making brows a focus. First impression, I really like that product. And last but not least, it's time for lips. So this is the Hourglass Confession Ultra Slim High Intensity Lipstick. The packaging is very pretty, it's such a small, slim lipstick, it's called a slim lime lipstick. I have the shade First Time, which is a bit of a peachy nude, so this is £31, but you can buy refills going forward um, and pop them into this tube, which will make the price cheaper and it's good for the environment. So this glides on to give the most accurate precision. It's highly pigmented formula that delivers saturated, long-lasting colour that won't feather or fade. So this is in a nice blush colour which is hopefully going to suit me. This would pop into your bag and not take up much space. It's £31 for 9 grams. This product is made in Italy and let's do it. very very close to my natural lip colour actually. Just a little bit more peach. It almost looks like I've got nothing on at all. Very creamy formula. It is opaque, I'd say it's kind of a satin finish, it's kind of like a peachy nude on me. The fact that it's so close to my natural lip colour is making this a bit blah for me, but if I got a more flattering colour, maybe like a red or something, I think I might be enjoying this lipstick a bit more. It 
has brought a bit of luminosity to my lips. I might save this for nights out where I've got a really, really glam eye and need just something neutral on the lips. I'll let you know how it lasts in the description bar because I'm about to go and have lunch. I would say it's not my favourite finish. My lip lines are quite visible. I don't hate it. It's nice. It's creamy. It's okay. Maybe I'm just not loving it because of the shade choice. I'm going to add some more setting spray because... I did notice a bit of creasing above my lip from those combination of base products that I used. So there we have it. I think I'm done. Am I done? I'm definitely done. So this is, I'm gonna have hair now, my full face of first impressions. I think that I don't look half bad if I say so myself and because it was a first time application I'm looking pretty flawless despite those little quibbles I had about the base looking slightly creasy I put way too much of that Huda on so I'll go through the products I used and share my thoughts sorry I'm trying to make my hair look nice for you guys final thoughts loving this primer I don't think this was anything to do with the problems I was having with my base because it's very moisturising, very glowy. I might be um, persuaded to stray from my Smashbox photo finish on natural makeup days. Gorgeous luminosity, feels very skin loving, would wear this alone. I'm a fan of the Too Faced Hangover Primer. This foundation, very very lovely if you have already good skin. I'm not convinced how much that would build before getting cakey um, just because I didn't put any of the bronzer above my lip and it was still caking up a bit there so if you're naturally blessed with good skin this would be gorgeous if you have problem skin I would stay away from this one the most we can get out of this is a medium coverage the Pat McGrath concealer Let's see how it's doing now I would say this is just okay, wasn't mind boggling. I did notice that it had faded quite quickly off some of my blemishes. I probably won't be repurchasing this. Huda Tantar, use very, very sparingly. I did manage to save it. I think this would be lovely. Um, just put a little bit of time on. You can always build up if you need to. I'll let you know how it wears in the description box. What else did I use on my complexion now? This, this Beauty Pie Under Eye Luminizer is a bit amazing. Shall I even see? It says you can build it up throughout the day, so I'm gonna really test it now and add a little bit more on, just to see if it pills. But I love this. I prefer it to the Becca Under Eye Brightener that I usually use, um, and even I put a ton of that Becca powder on underneath and it's still not creasing or going cakey or weird. This is a bit of a hero. Along with the primer, this is one of my favourite things I tried today. I will be repurchasing this again to brighten up underneath my under eyes over and above the Becca products that I usually use to do that. So Beauty Pie, well done you have exceeded the um, product already in my makeup bag for the purpose of colour correcting. Loving, loving that one. This Cara Organics Luminizer, it's nice, it's subtle, it's glowy. I would recommend this for natural um, highlight lovers that don't want an out of this world blinding glow. Fenty Cream Blusher. It's nice, it doesn't beat my Stiller Convertible Colour, so probably wouldn't be repurchasing that one either. Didn't love this Becca Under Eye Powder, I felt like it was going to get cakey if I had applied any more. I didn't think it was mega brightening, this is a bit of a pass for me. It's okay, but it's not as good as the Laura Mercier 
Secret Under Eye Brightening Powder. Beauty Power Matte Cream Shadow after my initial learning curve. I loved it. It's really, really blend it, blendable. Um, just don't go in too heavy handed. Build it up bit by bit. This Hourglass Powder is kind of just okay for me. And bring out a deeper shade Hourglass. Come on. The All Nighter Ultra Go. It was just okay. It didn't blow me away. I'm not glowier than I've ever been. Um, the Becca Glowy Setting Spray makes me glowier than this one. The Morphe Continuous Setting Mist makes me glowier. There's a lot of glowy setting sprays. The Lila Beta Glow Face Mist makes me the glowiest I've ever been. So, Ultra Glow, I don't know. It's okay. <laughs> the mascara, pretty damn impressive for my first impressions does give that false lash effect very unique brush i'll let you know how it wears and how easy it is to remove in the description box oh i really enjoyed the rowan 52 degrees palette this was a bit of a winner for me i think i'm going to be reaching for this for glam makeup looks I think I can kind of get away with it in the day two. ABH Dip Brow, pretty good. A bit full on for my tastes, but nevertheless, decent product. Hourglass Lipstick, Confessions, creamy, opaque, even coverage. It's not patchy or anything. Feels comfortable on the lips. I just picked out a shade that I'm not keen on. My bad. This formula is making me notice my lip lines, which I don't like. Maybe put a gloss on top to avoid that. Very beautiful packaging. Wouldn't be rushing to buy this one again. So thanks for being with me. I'm quite impressed by the way my makeup has turned out today and got a lot of new finds in there. Thanks for being with me today. Any questions, pop them down below and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye guys.